नमस्कार गवर्नर परिषा प्रोफेसर गणेशी लाल जी यूनियन मिनिस्टर फॉर एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर्स वेलफेयर एंड प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आईसीएआर सोसाइटी श्री नरेंद्र सिंह तोमर जी मिनिस्टर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर्स एम्पावरमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ ओडिशा श्री रणेंद्र प्रताप स्वाई जी सेक्रेटरी डीएआरई एंड डायरेक्टर जनरल आईसीएआर डॉक्टर हिमांशु पाठक जी प्रेसिडेंट एसोसिएशन ऑफ राइस रिसर्च वर्कर्स डॉक्टर पवन कुमार अग्रवाल जी डायरेक्टर आईसीएआर नेशनल राइस रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट डॉक्टर अमरेश कुमार नायक जी साइंटिस्ट स्टूडेंट्स एंड ऑल दी पार्टिसिपेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन I am happy to be here with you today. I am glad to see young scientists, especially women, among you. You have gathered here to participate in the Second Indian Rice Congress, which will, over these four days, discuss a variety of topics related to this important grain. It is heartening to see a gathering of talented scientists who invest their time and energy for rich research. rice research and also for indians food security and livelihoods there is no need to underline the importance of rice before this audience you know very well how rice is the cornerstone of food security in india and also a key factor for our economy rice also figures very prominently in our heritage and culture right from the vedas our ancient literature in sanskrit and other languages have reached references to this grain and many varieties of rice many rituals and ceremonies of various religions traditions are considered incomplete without akhyat and the undertaken rites which is smooth and symbol of prosperity and even the wholeness of life in many parts of india the first solid food grain given to a child is usually something made of rice it also features in famous legends and myths i am sure you remember many tales such as the one about sudama's rice which underlines the bonds of love between old friends rice is rightly called the grain of life it arguably feeds more people than any other comparable food grain especially in asia india of course has been the biggest exporter of the grain helping people in other parts of the world ensure basic food security and also letting them savor different rice varieties ladies and gentlemen though india is the leading consumer and exporter of rice today the situation was different when the nation became free the national rice research institute was established in 1946 soon after the great bengal famine and just before the we own independence in those days we were dependent on imports to meet our food requirements and often the nation lived what was called a sheep to mouth existence if the nation could overcome that dependency and has become the largest exporter a lot of credit goes to the nrri the institute had contributed immensely to india's food security and also to enhancing farmers lives for more than 75 years now the nrri has been working in the areas of basics applied and adaptive research related to paddy while also imparting training to the various stakeholders ladies and gentlemen 
India is proud of its rich biodiversity and that includes varieties of rice too. Every religion, region of this country boasts of a unique rice grain of its own with a distinct taste. In the last century, as irrigation facilities expanded, rice come to be grown in new places and found new consumers. Such a shift is not always good for the water usage in some religions. The paddy crop requires high amounts of water, but many parts of the world are facing severe water shortage due to climate change. Droughts, floods, and cyclones are now more frequent, making rice cultivation more vulnerable. Even as rice has broken new grounds, there are places where traditional varieties are facing challenges. I am glad to know that traditional rice growers from the tribal communities of Odisha have helped conserve and unique genetic resources of rice for ages. I must mention here the exemplary work of Srimati Kamala Pujari from Koraput, who has been collecting and preserving hundreds of rare and endangered crop varieties, including rice. She was honored with the Padma Sri Award for her inspiring initiative. Thus, the task before us today is to find the middle path, preserving and conserving traditional varieties on one hand and maintaining ecological balance on the other. I am therefore happy to learn that NRRI scientists are actively seeking solutions by collecting, identifying, and characterizing unique rice germplasm that can survive these cultivation challenges. I am told that this Rice Congress has dedicated sessions to discuss these issues. Another challenge is to save the soil from excessive use of chemical fertilizers which are considered necessary for not modern rice cultivation. We need to reduce our dependence on such fertilizers in order to keep our soil healthy. I am confident our scientists are at work to devise eco-friendly rice production systems. Ladies and gentlemen, as rice forms the big, uh, bedrock of our food security, we must consider its nutritional aspects too. Large section of low income groups depends on rice, which is often the only source of daily nutrition for them. Therefore, delivering protein, vitamins, and essential micronutrients through rice can help combat malnutrition. I am told ICR. NRRI has developed India's first high-protein rice called CR Dhan 310, which will help us in improving the country's overall nutrition profile. I am glad to learn that NRRI has also released a high-zinc rice variety called CR Dhan 315-315. The development of such biofortified varieties is an ideal example of science in the service of society. More and more of such efforts will be needed to support the increasing population amid a changing climate. I am confident that India's scientific community, including those present here today, will rise to the challenge. Fruits of science and technology must reach those who need it the most, that is the underprivileged sections of the society. Science and technology will help 
in removing any division and inequality of society. I hope this process will speed up with more and more young women taking up science and technology as a career. Ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, the National Rice Research Institute, the Association of Rice Research Workers, and other co-organizers for organizing the second Indian Rice Congress. I am confident that after four days of extensive deliberations among rice researchers from India and other countries, the organizers will summarize key suggestions for future considerations. A document presenting the gist of deliberations will be helpful to the policy makers of this country. I wish the Second Indian Rice Congress a grand success. Thank you. Joy Hind, Joy Hart. <laughs>